All right, good afternoon, traders. Today is choppy day, August 2nd, 2024. This is the BYOB market wrap up with me, John Kerrigan. Let's take a look at some charts. All right, first chart. Let's take a look at SPY. S P Y. All right, so SPY got a lower low and a lower a lower high and a lower low closing below the bearish trap under the 17 EMA that's a downtrend okay on the two hour all right we got a downtrend the yellow 3 EMA is under the white 8 EMA price the 3 the 8 all underneath the 17 EMA that's a downtrend okay price action got a lower high got a lower low Let's take a look at QQQ. I want to go out on a limb and say it probably looks the same way. All right. So QQQ, lower high, lower low, closing under the bearish trap under the 17 EMA. Still in a downtrend. FNGU, going to look the same way. All right. Lower high, lower low, closing under the bearish trap under the 17 EMA. Still in a downtrend. IWM. Fell out of bed. IWM, uh, I don't know. This is kind of a flaky downtrend. I don't know. We haven't broken this low. It's a flaky uptrend, flaky downtrend. Kind of like waffling in the middle. We did break that low. I'm just going to call it an uptrend. Call that a bull flag, I guess. Um, that's tough to call. Anyways, all right, lower high, lower low, closing under the bearish trap underneath the 17 EMA. Right on minor support right here. Okay, a little bounce off minor support. That one's tough. Consolidating over there, pulling back. I guess when it breaks this low, that's, the, uh, that's when it's in a downtrend. So it's in a flaky uptrend. That's all I'm going to say. Flaky uptrend for IWM. Diamond Dow. I saw the news on Diamond Dow. Diamond Dow in a downtrend, all right, because they broke this low. All right, so Diamond Dow in a downtrend. Uh, they could recover it just by taking out this high, but Diamond Dow in a downtrend, lower high, and a lower low. So Diamond Dow downtrend, lower high, lower low, closing underneath the bearish trap, underneath the 17 EMA. Diamond Dow enters downtrend status. Although, okay, still over that uptrend line, all right, but it's pulling back and it made lower highs and lower lows, okay, so it still can have a downtrend on the pullback and still be in a daily uptrend, so there you go, we got, you can call it a flaky uptrend or you can call it a bona fide downtrend. Either way, it broke that low, made a lower high, and the lower low. All right, so there's Diamond Dow. Let's take a look at our technicals. This is going to be scary. I haven't looked at them all day. Yeah, they suck. All right, so T2122, we were in the seller's chop zone yesterday. The bears pushed us out of the overbought zone, and then they booted us from the buy zone straight into the seller's chop zone. I mean, they clear. we cleared the whole buy chop zone. I mean, they just booted us. Like, we were airborne all the way over the chop zone for the buyers. And then we wound up waffling around all day yesterday in the seller's chop zone. And then, looks like they booted us. Now we're airborne again all the way into the oversold zone. All right? Then we chopped around here. Bulls threw us out. Wound up just chopping around inside the sell zone for the rest of the day, kind of lifting up right there. So not a pretty sight for T2122. Probably not going to look good on T2123. Uh, caught underneath this uh, rising 200 SMA. I would have thought they could have broken out of that with a V with a V bottom, but they got hooked. And now they're trapped underneath the force field yet again on the 15 minute 200 SMA. Okay, so there's T2123. Started out red, wait, started out green. No, started out red, 
Stayed red almost all day except for one candle right there. And I guess the bears just took, took a coffee break and then they resumed afterwards. That's all I can say. T2123. Oh, no. Three red candle bars right here. Uh, gosh, it just seems like yesterday we made new all-time highs, and now already we're turning red. It is a nice bull flag, and it's holding up there. Okay, I got to admit that. That's, that's a bull flag, and you're going to get some pullbacks inside your bull flag. So here's T2123, three bar, bull flagging across the top. Just made recent new recent highs, all-time highs right there. So, uh, nonetheless, it's still bullish, all right? FNGU, we saw that earlier, okay? Red from beginning, almost to the end. Uh, the bears just decided to call it an early weekend, and they let the bulls have the last candle. That's what it looks like to me, all right? Still caught underneath the Death Star force field right here, just pushing price lower and lower and lower. They tried to run the channel at the Death Star, and they didn't make it, all right? They got rejected. So there's FNGU. Let's go back. Let's take a look at, let's look at a few sectors, okay? We already know SMH was in a downtrend when we opened up today and still in a downtrend. You can see there, lower high, lower low, still in a downtrend. XLK, all right, lower high, lower low. It was in a downtrend this morning. Nothing's changed. Still in a downtrend. Lower high, lower low. Closing, it's in a downtrend underneath the bearish trap. Underneath the 17 EMA. All right, let's take a look at financials. Jeez. Financials looking like the Dow. All right, financials breaking the low here. All right. After making a brand new high two days ago, I don't know, I'm going to call that a flaky uptrend or that's a downtrend. They broke the low, so that's a new low. Financials in a downtrend, they couldn't hold it, so they're in a downtrend. All right, so there's XLF, lower high, lower low, closing below the bearish trap underneath the 17 EMA. Let's take a look at the industrials. Same program. All right. Industrials two days ago were at new all time highs. And now they're breaking the low right here, making a lower low. So industrials also in a downtrend. So we got, oh my gosh, let me just go ahead and finish the rest of this. All right. Let's take a look at IYT. Yeah, IYT in a downtrend. They broke the low. No question about it. They broke the low. IYT in a downtrend, lower high and lower low. So IYT, downtrend on that one. Lower high, lower low, closing under the bearish trap under the 17 EMA. Let's go take a look at energy. Maybe there's a maybe there's a window of light somewhere in this house. Still in a downtrend, lower high, lower low, closing underneath the bearish trap, underneath the 17 EMA. USO still in a downtrend. UNG, UNG made brand new lows, all-time low, new all-time low for UNG. That is a downtrend, okay, no matter how you spin it. SLV in a downtrend since it broke this low. If they break this high, they could be in an uptrend, all right, but they couldn't do it. Lower high, lower low, closing underneath, bearish trap underneath the 17 EMA, all right? SLV downtrend, GLD. GLD's in an uptrend, all right? Uh, that is the all-time high right there, and they are within striking distance of it right there, okay? All they gotta do is climb up that wick. Don't know why they couldn't get it done today, but anyways, outside day for GLD, higher high, lower low, closing over the bullish trap, over the 17 EMA, GLD still in an uptrend. Okay, so let's talk about what's left that's in an uptrend, okay? We got, let me see, an XLI, nope. Uh, GLD's in an uptrend, and IW, 
IWM is holding on to an uptrend. Had this V been underneath the 17 EMA, I think I would have called it a downtrend. All right, but it's it's it was up here at that time. So IWM and GLD are about the only things that are in an uptrend. Everything else, oh yeah, XRT. Let's go take a look at XRT. All right, XRT, after making an all-time new high, see that right there? Is that a new all-time high? Almost, what's the, what's, the, what's the number there? High 80.05, high 80.10, not a new all-time high. That was probably the new all-time high. So, XRT, breaking the low, all right, now in a downtrend, so... Everything's in a downtrend, except for gold. Oh, there's the all-time high. So that would have been the two-year high. Okay, except for gold and IWM. And let me just say IWM, not very convincing. All right, so pulling back. How far can we pull back? Heck, we can pull back to 520, 500, maybe even to last year's high. That would be 480, okay? So we'll see what happens, all right? Right now, it was a rough day, really rough day. Let's take a look at SPY, all right? And just change this up a little bit. Okay, and let's pick something with nothing on it. Clean this up so you guys can see it. All right, so look at it on the 10 minute chart. All right, so we gap down, never filled gap, so the bears were in control. Okay, we had a nice 10 minute downtrend and we took it right underneath this candle. Red erases green, and if you stayed in it, it dropped pretty far. It dropped from 536 all the way down to. 529. That's a nice size drop, okay? It all depends on how long you hung in there. But there were some pit stops along the way that were probably like some some uh, anchored VWAPs that probably would have been great profit-taking places. And I got to tell you, I didn't ride it all the way there because I saw some anchored VWAPs that I thought for sure price would be bouncing off of, and they didn't get a bounce off of it. So... Uh, we kind of waffled in between two anchored VWAPs and never really got going. Then we had a pullback to VWAP. We played that. Okay, so here's the cross. Then we crossed back under. Then we crossed back up. And then we got we got stuffed right here by VWAP. Just couldn't, couldn't quite close a complete candle over VWAP. See that? And that's one of my criteria for going long is, you know, I like to see a full candle over VWAP and not a, not a doji and not a big topping tail candle. All right, if it's not a doji, I don't want to, I don't want a candle that has more wick than body and tail, okay? Because that's a, that's a sign to me that the bears own that, own that time segment. Can you show, can I show, yeah, sure, go ahead. You can post anything. So Gilbert bought a call on 5.32 right here. He bought the August 5th call, all right? And his stop loss was down here, and he got bumped out. All right, so let's 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 bring this up so you can see it. All right, so here's here's Gilbert's. He bought a call on green on red. Green erases red. Okay, right over here, and uh, he got stopped out. Notice it was a Doji candle right there. See, not a good candle to buy on those Doji candles. Any candle with more wick 
than tail and body. Really not a great candle to buy your calls into. But if you have something and you got to protect your, um, you got to protect your position. Sometimes you have to buy that. Okay, so he jumped in on that, and he got stopped out right here. That's tough. That's really tough. So you got in on this based on this green candle. As soon as that candle gets erased, you have a reason to get out. You don't have to wait till down here. Okay? I'm just, I'm just saying, as soon as that candle, that green candle fully erased, because you bought a call based on price moving up, all right, so you, your clear bars are your down bars, obviously. Okay, so here, as soon as the next candle came in and erased that, you have a reason to get out if you want to. But he put his stop. He wanted to give it room to move. He came back some. Notice he did come back. And then he got popped on the second dip down right there. Okay, so that's a tough one, Gilbert. Uh, just kind of waffling back and forth right there. But you know, uh, I give you I give you a lot of credit. Oh, it's ten calls. I got I give you a lot of credit. Number one, I mean, it takes some courage to share your trades in front of everybody. All right, so uh, lot, lots of credit on that. All right, it, not very many people that will do that, uh, and especially on on the losers. Everybody wants to share the winners, but uh, thanks for sharing that. On a note. To make it a learning experience, you know, you know, let's let's try not to buy candles with big topping wicks that are more than your body, more than the body and, and tail combined. Okay, that would be a little bit of something to kind of keep in mind right there. You know what? I get it. You, you went up. It was consolidated in a bullish fashion, and then it ripped through. The downtrend line right here and you thought hey it's going to take off without me um, you had the august 5th so they didn't expire till tomorrow you didn't have to sell it uh, but it hit a point where it was underneath the the base here which would probably be a great place to stop out right there uh, just unfortunate that 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 candle right there got you that's unfortunate yeah, near the end of the day. Here's another rule that you might want to think about. After 2 o'clock, um, be really selective on your trades. Okay, after 2 o'clock, be really super selective. Unless you need to protect a position um, or unless you got a trend day, I mean, it's really not worth jumping into unless you've got a thriller trade or you've got to protect a position or you've got um, you know those two scenarios there after two o'clock uh, nothing but a lot of trash happens or unless you got a thriller trade one of those all right that way you can put that in your notes or add that to your plan maybe you might want to add that it's up to you yeah I see at that wick so it's a it's a tough one, but you know what? I give you a lot of credit for sharing that. That that's a painful one, but um, you know, time to change a trading plan. Maybe let's not take trades after two, okay? Especially on a Friday. All right, actually any day, unless you've got a thriller trade or a trend day or um, what am I say? You protect you're protecting a position. But uh, thanks for sharing that with everybody. And uh, hey, learn from Gilbert's mistake here, all right? So he's sharing it, all right? That's a painful mistake, you know? Learn.